Hi everyone and welcome back to Scale Model Shed and this build of RFM's M4 A3 Sherman. So this is where we left off in the first video where we went through the assembly of the kit and the completion of the interior. And in this video we're going to cover the painting and weathering of the rest of the model. Now I've had quite a few comments from you guys asking when this video is going to be out, so without further ado... Now my first step with this model is going to be a black surface primer. And thinking about the paint job as a whole, I wasn't going to go for a fury look on this model, but I love this camo pattern so much, I'm going to go with that. For the olive drab, I'm going to use this colour modulation set from Mr. Hobby. And this set has four graduated olive drab shades, which come in extra large jars. But before any of that, and after cleaning the photo etch parts with some IPA, I primed them with Mr. Metal Primer. Then the whole model is primed in Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. I primed the wheel assemblies off the model to ensure no areas were missed. Then I glued the wheels in place before the olive drab is painted. It's important that any areas missed with the olive are painted in black. The black will act as kind of a fake shadow and at least there will be no bare plastic. OK, the model's primed, so we can move on to painting the olive drab. OK, from left to right we've got shadow, olive drab base, highlight and highlight 2, and we are going to start with olive drab base. Now the base colour is done, we can start doing some fake shadow effects and some darker areas around any recesses. Now highlight one. Now although this is a highlight colour, I used it to appear more like the main colour of the tank. I stay away from the shadowed areas and I quite heavily mottle it over the top of the olive drab base.
and finally highlight 2. So the tank looks great in olive drab and the colour of the Mr Hobby paints are brilliant but I still feel the need to cover a lot of it in black. To be more precise I'm going to use Tamiya's NATO black. This will give a much more weathered look than using an XF1. The camouflage pattern is airbrushed straight onto the model without masking. I then add some flat black to the NATO and apply some shading to the black areas. Once the main painting is complete I apply some gloss varnish to the areas that I will be applying decals to. There are only three decals on this scheme. After leaving the decals 24 hours to completely dry, I then give the whole model a coat of satin varnish. Now it's time for some chipping. I add some white to the highlight 2 olive drab until I'm happy with the colour. I also add a couple of drops of paint retarder. We're going to be using a sponge to apply the chips and this prevents the paint drying too quickly on the sponge. We are looking to achieve a shade significantly lighter than the shade of the paint that has been applied to the model. Most of the paint needs to be taken off the sponge by dabbing on a paper towel and this allows us greater control over the chipping process.
My initial plan was to use Vallejo's Panzer Ace's Dark Rust for the darker chips. But I felt the shade was a little too light, so I darkened it with some German Camo Black Brown. The darker shade rust was applied inside the largest, but not all, of the pale chips. Depending on the amount of detail desired, chipping a model can take an awful long time or it can be relatively quick and the sponge method does definitely speed things up. Now, I didn't spend too much time chipping this model, I only work on my models for a couple of hours a few evenings a week. Now, if I had the time it would be spent creating chips with greater finesse and working much harder to make things look more in scale. After painting the tracks in German grey, care is taken to get the track wash into all the little nooks and crannies. It's pretty much at this point you need to start making decisions on how much mud, if any, you're going to apply to the tank, as it will determine how the tracks are going to be weathered. If you're unsure, often it's a good idea to leave the tracks until last. After basically applying a wash of dry light soil, loose ground is speckled over the entire track. I then apply heavy earth down the centre of the track and blend it with an odourless enamel thinner. Then the tracks are speckled with dry earth splashes. The underside of the track has a lot of contact with the tank's rubber lined road wheels. This is simulated by applying a rubber colour to the contact areas. And finally applying graphite gives the tracks an instant metallic look. Now onto the lower hull, I start by liberally applying dry light soil. Once this has dried slightly you can start to create some dynamic with a cotton bud. I then soften the edges with some enamel thinner. This stage is then left to dry. You can start wet blending another colour, but this can prove difficult to control. Mm -hmm. 
The darker wet mud can then be applied. I then airbrush some Tamiya buff to carefully unify the two shades. The last stage to the lower hull is some dry earth splashes and then the same theory is applied to the tank's running gear. Now moving on to the tank's upper hull, I paint the metal parts of the tools in Vallejo burnt iron. Thinned heavily with white spirit, burnt umber oil is used to create wood grain and staining effects. Then some light rust wash brings the metal parts of the tools to life. Then continuing with the light rust, I go around some of the chipping. This adds a nice touch of colour to the model. This enamel based wash can always be adjusted with a clean brush moistened with enamel thinner. I admit this looks pretty messy and to be honest I didn't know where I was going with it but a dry brush sorted it all out for me. Same thing here as on the lower hull, applying dry light soil and then feathering the edges and blending with enamel thinner.
some dark earth pigment from Vallejo mixed with the enamel mud came in handy here to bulk out the texture. For the darker earth parts of the upper hull I decided to use turned earth. This was due to its paler and slightly more oily appearance. And now it's time to fit the tracks, during which I snapped off one of the top return rollers. And this was glued back on with super glue. The tracks are then tensioned by turning the rear idler, which is on a concentric pin. These are Abtilung oils that I put on a piece of card the day before. The oils can easily be softened up with some white spirit. To create a bare metal look I used some polished metal from MIG applied with a sponge. Streaking grime's got quite a vibrant tone and it's great when it's used on darker vehicles. Now unfortunately I didn't get this bit on film but basically the part was primed in black then white was sprayed into the central areas, streaking grime and light rust was then applied around the edges using a cotton bud. The spare tracks were given a dry rust look using life colour washes. These washes were speckled from dark to light and allowed to dry between colours. And here's my pretty mediocre attempt to create the appearance that the spare track had been removed.
So with the addition of some jerry cans, each painted in a different olive drab shade, that's the model complete for now. Although I don't think I'm finished with it quite yet, as I do have an idea for a diorama and as a hint it may be involving a Tamiya M26. And at that point I'm sure to have more additions like stowage. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you like the finished model. I enjoyed building it and it really is a great kit. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.